Hello there guys, my name is Alexander and you're watching Arbitrage Scanner YouTube channel. And today we're gonna learn how to utilize DAX arbitrage opportunities. So Arbitrage Scanner actually supports DAX for all the users that are that have platinum subscriptions or higher. So uh, what exactly is DAX arbitrage and how can you use it? So first of all, you need to set up your filters to actually see all the pairs that you can uh, trade your assets on. So uh, I did it like that. So for exchange for exchanges for buying, I put one inch Arbitrum, one inch Ethereum, and one inch Polygon networks. And uh, for selling, I just put every exchanges that I have. So uh, the one thing that we need to understand is that uh, right now we're supporting just one inch. It's gonna update soon. So as of uh, middle of the February of 2024, we are supporting one inch and one inch is not really a decentralized exchange. It is like an aggregator of DEXs. So which means that when you have access to one inch, you're actually having access to almost like 200 DEXs, different DEXs with a uh, price that uh, correlates between one another. All right, so now let's uh, stop updating our pairs and let's see uh, what arbitrage opportunities lies ahead of us. So, for example, I want to go to hot USDT pair. So, first of all, I open up it on Hobby, so the spot market, and then on one inch. All right. So, uh, the first check that you want to do is actually check if uh, hot USDT here and hot USDT here is actually the same project. So you can just uh, like look at the uh, logo of the the logo of the currency. Also check the withdrawal or deposit network status on the centralized exchanges. And then you're ready to go. You're ready to make a decision whether your trade is actually worth it. So uh, we will not talk about how you use uh, centralized exchange. I hope you guys all know it by now, but let's focus on the DEX, on the interface and uh, so on. So the first thing that we want to know is that on DEXs, there is no order book. So there is no order book like this or this on the decentralized exchange. Since uh, they are working with liquidity pools, it is a kind of different mechanism uh, underlying the exchange. All right, uh, and so here we have the pair. We can see that for uh, this amount of USDT, we got uh, 0 0.36 hot, which means that for one hot, we get 0 0.002 USDT. Whereas here, so the price here is actually higher. Yeah, it is higher than the index. So uh, probably this deal is. Uh, is actually great for us. But what we need to uh, take in, in mind is that on uh, Ethereum blockchain, which I'm trading right now, there is a high fee, high gas fee that will probably prevent you from uh, some successful deals. Maybe when you're uh, working with high volumes, there is no uh, such thing that as a high fee. But with the small deals, it's actually can impact uh, your trade really, uh, really much. Right. Uh, so the thing that we want to know here is that how Arbitrage Scanner is actually dealing with volumes on exchanges. So as I've said earlier, there is no order book on uh, one inch or any DEX. So uh, what we need to understand is that the volume that you see right here is actually the volume based on the centralized exchange. So for example, Hobby here, we say that it has uh, $745 in volume that we can trade on uh, those prices. So we are basing the volume on that parameter. And on one inch, uh, there is uh, a difference between how much you pay for some token when you're trying to um, buy like 100 of those tokens and uh, when you're trying to buy 1000 of those tokens. So for the Ethereum blockchain on one inch, the volume that we are uh, trying to screen is $500. So that means that this price right here is actually uh, actual for the deal worth of $500. Uh, whereas for all the other blockchains that we support via one inch, so for example, Polygon, Arbitrum, uh, Clayton, Gnosis, and so on, uh, the volume here parameter is set to $100. All right. Uh, the next thing that we're going to learn about one inch is that it has two actually modes. Uh, 
so right now I am in uh, classic mode. Yeah, right. But there is also a fusion mode. So to enable it, we need to go to trade, then advanced mode. And here we have, yeah, that it is, uh, classic and fusion. So what is actually the, the, the difference here? So for this actual pair, uh, there is uh, no fusion mode because uh, the swap amount is too low. Okay, let's try doing this uh, too low still, right? All right, yeah. So uh, when you're trying to swap uh, 100,000 hot to USDC, you are getting actually the fusion mode. So what is the difference between fusion mode and classic mode? So uh, the selling point of the fusion mode is that you don't have a network fee. So it's just zero dollars. But there is a catch, of course, because the price here will be actually worse for you uh, for the big volumes. So uh, you're not paying any network fees, but the price that you're buying your tokens or selling them is actually worse for you and better for the exchange because it is taking the responsibility to pay the fee for you. So uh, arbitrage scanner is only working with classic mode. So uh, the price that you will see here on in our table will be actual for the classic mode for the one inch. Right. So um, what we need to learn also about one inch is that sometimes there is an opportunity to trade between one network on one inch and the other network on one inch. So uh, right now I couldn't catch that on camera because it's uh, a, a really rare occurrence uh, for arbitrary deals to pop up between one inch Ethereum or and one inch uh, Arbitrum, for example. But uh, sometimes you can catch that. So uh, let me show you how it might work. Uh, so for example, I want to, uh, so there is a token called data on ethereum and there is a token called data on bnb chain so data streamer and usdc for example All right so probably not uh not not a lot of liquidity here uh but still you will get uh, our point so uh to actually make the transaction so let's imagine that there is a spread between uh one inch ethereum on the token data and one inch uh bnb chain on the same data token so what you need to do here is actually to bridge your tokens through the networks so see uh since the ethereum and bnb chain are not compatible uh blockchains that means that you need to somehow bridge or wrap your token. So uh, bridges, there are there is a bridge aggregator on one inch. So for example, I need BNB chain bridge. And uh, here on the website, uh, I can transfer from Ethereum mainnet to BNB chain some, uh, some amount of my tokens. Uh, so bridging is actually uh, not a big deal in arbitrage because First of all, the prices between uh, tokens on different networks could really, really change. So, for example, the 10% spread is actually okay because bridging is uh, a high work, uh, a high demand uh, transaction because uh, it will take some time to bridge a token. Probably, for example, for Ethereum to BNB, it could take almost like up to seven days or from 15 minutes to seven days so it's a lot of time and spread can uh, just disappear for for that time uh, also the bridging involves paying the fees paying the fees on the one network then on the other so uh, you need to carefully uh, strategize all the bridging tra transactions maybe you will uh, gain a lot of money by that strategy because it is actually new it's actually hard to do that but uh, you need to be responsible that and you need to know that there is a lot of uh, different uh, catch-ups for that opportunity. All right, so probably that is all that I want to talk about uh, uh, considering DEXs. Uh, in the meantime, we got, our team will add more and more DEXs to arbitrage scanners, so you would have more and more arbitrage opportunities. Thank you for the time, and if you have any questions, then you can ask them in our support Telegram chart. Okay, goodbye.